Welcome to Victory Quilts. I'm Eleanor Burns. This series is about the 1940s and World War II as it happened on the home front. Well, today's flock is the Liberty Star. It starts out as stripes and finishes up with diamonds and Y seams. I promise to take the fear out of Y seams today. September 2nd, 1945 marked the end of World War II and people around the world rejoiced. After six long years, the war was over. Prisoners were released and civilians were liberated. Well, the Liberty Star is an especially appropriate way of celebrating the end of an era. Well, this is an antique Liberty Star quilt, was made in the 1940s, possibly by a mother or wife of a soldier. You know, the patriotic fabrics were easy to select with just flag red, glory blue, and pure white in both the blocks and the three borders. And you know, the quilt maker did a mighty fine job of putting the diamonds together. There's no innies or outies in the centers of these stars. Now, once she started this quilt, it's obvious she needed it larger because this top section is made from a different red fabric. Well, the quilting is simple. She just stitched in the ditch on the diamonds and then did a motif in the white background. Oh, it's soft and cozy as a Liberty Star quilt should be. Teresa Barnes made this Liberty Star quilt recently. She just received her citizenship after living in this country for 30 years. She said she wanted a Liberty Star as a reward for passing her test. Well, I told her if she made the blocks, I would take care of the machine quilting. So that's exactly what I did. Teresa displays it proudly in our home. It's just beautiful. Now, once the war was over, the soldiers came home. Proud citizens from small towns across America came out in droves to welcome their boys safely home. They lined the streets and railways with a hometown parade. There was celebrating and a lot of flag waving. Well, we can also show our support by making this quilt, Welcome Home Soldier. It's such a heartwarming message. Now, the letters across the top are made from two and a half inch squares. And then in the center, the home looks like a cozy little house surrounded by pine trees. And of course, there's flags across the bottom. This quilt was designed by Cindy Baird, proudly showing her gratefulness for the soldiers in her family. Well, that's enough talking. We have Y scenes to tackle. The Liberty Star has been symbolic of freedom for hundreds of years. In the 1800s, when a boy turned of age and he joined the service, he was given a Liberty Star quilt. It was symbolic of his freedom from his home. He was free to go about his life. He was free to even keep his earnings. And now we're celebrating the end of the war with the Liberty Star. Well, this is the 12-inch block, and the important thing to remember is that we want that red to go inside the center. Look how flat that is. And the 6-inch is just as wonderful. It's just so cute with these little pieces in it. Well, it strips. It's easy strip sewing. Now, the strips are all cut at 1 and 3 eighths inches for the 12-inch block. You want to line up the navy, and then the background and the red, and piece them together. They are salvage to salvage strips. You don't want to use half strips. Salvage to salvage, nice long strips, and use a quarter of an inch seam or even just a touch more than a quarter of an inch. Because when you're done sewing, you're going to take these strips, press the seams away from the background, and then measure them. They need to be three inches. This is really important. They need to be exactly three inches. And if they're not exact, we'll just do a little sliver trimming off from each side until they're three inches because we're going to cut a three inch diamond. 
All right, we need to find our 45 degree line. I'm going to turn it over so that the ruler is actually upside down. I now have the 45 degree line right across the top of the strip. I'm going to slide it over. Don't want to waste just a bit, not at all. So take it clear over to the corner as close as you can to the salvage edge and then cut a 45 degree angle. This, you're just going to take it, get rid of it. Now, keep that 45 degree line along the top. Keep on sliding it until you come to three inches. Right along here you see three inches. There's two important things to keep lined up. So, cut one more diamond. And that is the perfect diamond. Now, this is the challenge to get eight as perfect as that one. Keep that 45, keep that three along there, and just keep on cutting the whole way across the strip. You do not have much to spare, so you wanna do it very carefully. Don't leave anything in between. Let's just keep on putting them in our stack, and we'll make at least two pairs. You need to make four pairs. Just keep on cutting. You know me, I'm ready to go. So we're just going to take them this is the center, the red is the center. Let's put this one right here. You'll have four exactly like that. Now, just take the top one and flip it over to the one on the left. And I'm just gonna put these aside so you can really focus on just this pair. Now we wanna stop sewing a quarter of an inch from the end. Sometimes it's hard just to know exactly where that quarter of an inch is. So I'm going to use the quarter inch line on my um, six inch square up ruler and just lightly draw a line. That's a quarter of an inch. Turn your ruler and do that little drawing exactly the same. I'm just working in the corner because I'm just trying to find that X right there. That is the spot. Now we want to get it all lined up at the top and stitch down to that dot and stop. Let's see how I can do. Okay. Remember, it's not a scant quarter. Do not do a scant quarter. Okay, perfect quarter. And when you get along here, when if you're sewing on the stitches, you'll know it is really great. Get right up to that dot. I'm right there. Just cut those threads and let's take a look. See, I went right down here, stopped right on that point. Now, I'm just going to take it and from the wrong side, setting this up for locking seams. Just take and press it to the left. And you can give it a little shot of steam because it is on the bias. So give a shot of steam. Let's take a look from the right side. I think this is gonna work out perfect. Now, you see how it matches up here at the top. You've got that tip hanging out. Down here at the bottom, it's one quarter inch that is totally open. These are Y seams. Oh no, people shudder when you say Y seams, but they're not that bad. Okay, now I'm using the six inch square ruler again. I'm gonna line up the diagonal line on the ruler with that seam, get it nice and perfect. And then all I wanna do is just cut off that tip. Now, the challenge is to make three others just like this one. Now comes those dreaded Y seams. Actually, I'm gonna take the mystery out of those Y seams and you'll find they're really easy to do. So here is the seam right here. We already have done that one. And then we have these two seams coming right up in here. It does look like a Y. Well, these four and three eighths inch squares are going to fit right into this seam. It's called insetting a seam. So let me just take one of the diamonds and one of the squares, and this is what's going to fit together. So let's find that quarter of an inch right again. Let's just take this six by six ruler and put the quarter of an inch lines right in the very corner, put a very light dot, really do a light dot. It's just really for you to see. Put the dot right there and put a pin right through that quarter of an inch. Now, take your diamond, we have to put this right into this part. So I like to just close my pair and then open it up like this. 
because right here is the very spot that we stopped and we know that that's a quarter of an inch away from the end. So if you take this square, take the pin and just aim right in for that spot, push it together, squeeze it together and you have to keep everything else out of the way. That's the tricky part, keeping everything else out of the way and just line up. Oh, I've got to put that pin a little bit straighter. Now it's going to line up like this right along here and you have, oh, it varies. You've got a tip hanging out on the end in the navy, about a fourth of an inch, sometimes more. So let's start right up here at the pin, right at the dot. We put our needle down right in that spot. Oh, I have to kind of eyeball it good. Right down in that spot. I think that I'm going to actually pick that needle up again. I'm not sure it's perfect. That's the hard part. I didn't have my tongue quite right. I have to do it like this. Okay, now, got my needle down. Put my presser foot down. Hold up, line up that edge. Looking good now. So just so, from that pin right down to the bottom, cut your threads and we'll take a look. Perfect. It's a good thing I did move it over because that's right where it started. Got a little bit hanging down. Now we only have one more side to do. So this is the tricky part. You just kind of swing it around. I don't even think that's tricky, do you? Just swing it around and up here, you want to keep everything out of the way. When you turn it over, you actually can see the spot where you were to put your needle down and stitch down to the outside edge. See, I think this is actually pretty easy to do. I would not try Y seams. I don't know why. I, they just scared me. Everybody said, Y seams. And actually, it's not that bad at all. Okay, hold that with your stiletto. Getting it good. Whenever I teach this to my students, they say, oh my gosh, Elle, if I would have known you were going to teach Y seams, I probably wouldn't have come to class. And in the end, what do they say? Piece of cake. I'm glad I learned it. So that's what it looks like. Just like that, you've got a nice corner right up in there. Let's take a look at the back side. There you can see it's just perfect. So all you have to do now is just take this piece. Remember, gentle, maybe you don't want to do steam on this one. Let's just press right into that square and press the seam flat. Perfect. Now. All we have to do to get this ready to sew the center together is take um, six by six, line that up on there, and all we want to do is just cut off those tips, one side, turn it around, and trim off the other. Now, these triangles, the, these squares, are actually oversized so that we can square up the block and make it 12 and a half in the end. So. I've got four ready to go. Let's just lay it out. We're going to put one here like this. Let's just go right around in the circle. See if we get a nice flat center. So now with those four, they all have their corners in place. We want to go straight down this seam. So whenever you take the piece on the right and flip it to the left, right here, this seam, you lock with the seam underneath. It's going up here and underneath it's going down. And then the same thing on this half. This is the critical part. Lock it together, top seam going up, underneath seam going down. So once again, when we start sewing, we have to start a quarter of an inch in from the end. So we'll just do a little bit of eyeballing. I bet by now, once you do all of this, that you're really going to know what the quarter of an inch is. Okay, foot down, keep it lined up. Once I get it started, I like to roll it back, look at the seam, feel it, push it down. If it lays flat, then I know it's flat. So once you get to that middle part right there, just grab up the second piece, open it, look at it, roll it in with each other, feel, lock, and then just stitch 
right across there and stop one fourth inch from the end. And then you're just going to go back across the other way. Cut those threads. We'll look at the center, see if it's, oh, that's good. See, you've got your quarter of an inch seam right up there. That's good on one half. Let's take a look on the other half and let's just see. Perfect. Because if these are not uh, intersecting exactly like this right now, there's no way you can get it to look any better in the end. So take the half on the right, flip it to the left, and this time so we can swirl those center seams, push the top seam up and the underneath seam down. Top seam up, underneath seam down, and get those all locked together. You know, the day that the war ended, is probably just like the day when President Kennedy was shot. We all remember, in my generation, we remember exactly what we were doing the day he was shot. And the same with the end of World War II. Well, I read about one ship. The um, captain came over the loudspeaker and he said, attention, attention. This is your captain speaking. The Japanese have surrendered. The war is over. And you know, on that ship, it was silent for a minute. Nobody said a word. You could hear a pin drop. It was that quiet. And then, once everything sunk in, then the shouting began. People were crying. People were so happy hugging each other. So it was just such a wonderful, wonderful time just to remember what happened that day. There. Looking good. Matches in the center. Looks like all little V's. Now all we have to do is just clip this connecting thread right here. This is when I went down and I went across. Let's just find that thread. This is always the critical part. There it is right there. Clip it. And you're going to unsew these stitches. Just pull them out with your stiletto. The straight stitches that go up and down on this side. Turn it over and get those straight stitches on the opposite side. Just pick them out with your stiletto. If you have a seam rip or whatever, just pick them out. And then you can lay your block wrong side up and swirl. You always start on the top to the right, this one down, this one to the left, and this one up. You always go clockwise, and as you do, the center pops open, and you just mush it really good right in there. In on, on this star, you actually create a little four patch that is all red. Well, let me press this and I'll show you how to insert the triangles. We are so close to being done with this block. This is a six and three fourths inch square and we are just going to cut it on both diagonals. So just line up your cutter cut in one direction without picking up and moving your square. Go ahead and cut in the opposite direction. Now these triangles are just going to fit in place. Watch. I'm going to take this one and put it in this side. The top triangle goes at the top. I don't know why this works, but it works. The side triangle over on the side. The bottom one in the bottom. It just has something to do with the grains. They all go together beautifully. Now, this is going to fit in here as well with a Y seam. So let's just turn the triangle upside down. Find that quarter of an inch. Ooh, this is kind of tricky, isn't it? Let's turn it like this so we can see right where that quarter of an inch is. A little dot, not a big one. It's just for you. And place a pin in that dot. You know, this is exactly the same technique. It's just a little bit different shape. Now, take what you already have sewn and open it up. Just fold it up. Take this pin with the um, quarter inch marked and just place it right into the triangle spot. Let's just push that up together. Looking good. Line it up down here. Sew from the pin out. So, once again, put the needle down right in that dot and get it all lined up. Okay, needles in, press your foot down, quarter inch seam. 
just zip right along there. And then the way the seam that is pressed, it's pressed um, away from the corner. So you just have everything laid perfectly flat from behind. Let's see. Yes, it's looking good there. So now remove the pin and now line up the tip of the triangle right with that diamond. And the second side is just flip it over right now and you can just get that lined up. Right now, be careful because if you haven't been locking those seams, you don't want all those seams to be pulling out right at the last minute. Okay, hold that flat, so out to the outside edge. I get to look first. I want to make sure. We've got a nice point on there. Let's see. Ooh, looking great. So that's how that's in set. Right here you can see that we have plenty to trim away. It's looking really good. Now from the wrong side, this time we're just going to press the seams out towards that triangle. And then you will see how it lays flat on the back. Okay, so right here, remember we're still on the bias, so do it carefully. Press out. Give it a little steam if you want. That's perfect, the way it lays. Now, you're just going to go ahead and inset all of the remaining triangles. It's just perfect. The last thing to do is square up your block to 12 and a half inches. I'm going to pull this closer because it's going to turn around for me. I already have my 12 and a half inch square up ruler on top. The diagonal line is going right down through and you want to make sure you have a quarter of an inch seam on all four points. If you need to shift that ruler slightly so you're not trimming off any of those points, hold your hand down and cut on two sides, trimming away, and then without picking anything up, just rotate um, the mat around and make sure you've got those seams covered. Don't want to cut off any tips. And that is the block. It's perfect. You know, the sailors loved hearing those three little words. We're going home. Well, we are done with our block, and we're going home. I have a small eight-sided project for you that you can use as a table center or a wall hanging, and it's called Stars All Around. It uses three different blocks in the Victory Quilts book, and I have taught students all around. Oh, I've had such a great time. I taught students in Paducah, Kentucky, which is known as Quilt City, USA. I taught students in Marion, Indiana, which is the home of Marie Webster, and it's also the home of James Dean. And so we were cool that day. And I've also taught stars all around on a cruise ship on the way to Alaska. What a great time we had. It's fast and you can actually get it done in a day. We'll start out with the six and a half inch Hope of Hartford block. Make two of them. That's a lot of fun to do. Then I cut a, a narrow stripe. The stripe is only three and a half inches wide. I have my six and a half inch fussy cut ruler. I thought if I just put that fussy cut right in the very center and cut on both sides, I have two stripes all lined up here, that when I cut them, I'm gonna have them exact. That's really good. Now just go ahead and sew a stripe to each side of your Hope of Hartford. Then take a 10 inch square, just like this, and cut it on both diagonals. Ooh, you're just gonna have four triangles. This ruler is just barely long enough. Cut in one direction, turn your ruler, and cut in the second direction. So you have a total of four triangles, two for each one of these. And then you're just gonna put your triangles like this and like this. Sew it all together. Well, I've been busy in all of these places that I have been. This is what I already have. Hope of Hartford stripes, triangles. Then the next step is to take two 1941 nine patch. They are six and a half inch blocks, stripes on either side again. So the stripes on 
and then put the beautiful Liberty Star right in the very middle. So now let's just line this up. Got the beautiful stripes. That's going to go right like that. And you're going to put this piece right on the other side. And then the, um, the borders are just really fun around the outside edge. You're going to do two opposite sides and just trim them off and then do two remaining sides and trim them off again. I hope you enjoy making the Liberty Star. It's a strong and proud symbol of patriotic pride and freedom.